All right, welcome back everybody. Today's project is a little bit different. We're gonna be working on this Stealth Titan cargo trailer. It's eight and a half by 20. This is my mowing trailer. Right now we've got it hooked up to the leaf rig up there, dump truck. Um, but today I need to do brakes on this trailer. Uh, I've been running it without brakes for quite a while. So uh, I've got all the new brake assemblies right up here. Got those from my local trailer parts place. Um, make sure when you're buying these, there's a left hand and a right hand side. So you will need two left hands and two right hands. Um, we're gonna start, of course, by jacking the trailer up, uh, putting it on jack stands or some blocks like I've got down there, removing the wheels and the center caps and getting you down to the hubs. Uh, what you'll need for tools, uh, we'll be needing some uh, wire cutters, some wire strippers, crimpers, uh, dielectric grease, some uh, butt connectors. I've got some heat, heat shrink tubing there uh, that we'll seal those up with. Um, this right here is just kind of a specialty tool. This is for adjusting trailer brakes. If you don't have one of these, you can probably find it on Amazon for, uh, I don't know, probably 10 or 15 bucks or something like that. Uh, a pair of needle nose pliers, a uh, flathead screwdriver, and a rubber mallet. Uh, you might also need a large crescent wrench to bust off the castle nut if it's kind of tight on there. Um, roll of towels, it's a pretty greasy, messy job. So we'll need some shop towels handy. Uh, I've got a heat gun here for shrinking these uh, fittings and also the shrink tape. Uh, half inch impact, uh, we'll be using, uh, these are three quarter inch lug nuts. So you'll need a three quarter inch socket to pull those off and a nine sixteenth socket for pulling the uh, brake assembly off. Uh, and then we've also got a grease gun and grease uh, to grease the, uh, the hubs back up after we get everything completed. Uh, also, something good to sit on. Uh, if you don't have something good to sit on, then use a bucket like I'm doing. So let's get into it. All right, so first things first, take a roll uh, take a paper towel off the roll, lay it down on the ground. We'll be putting our parts and pieces on there. Uh, take your flathead screwdriver and your mallet. And we need to separate this cap here. Usually you can get a screwdriver in there. Kind of start prying it off. Kind of give it a little twist and pry. Get that to separate. access to the castle nut and cotter pin. You also need your uh, needle nose pliers. Uh, you might want to wipe some of the grease off of there if you need to to find the cotter pin. We're going to pry it up kind of straight there. And it kind of comes out at an angle down here so try to hook it with your pliers. Give it a good tug. Kind of wiggle it back and forth. Try to get it out of there. And there's your cotter pin. Try to keep all this stuff as clean as possible. You don't want to introduce any dirt into the bearings or anything like that whenever we go to put this back together. Uh, it's good to keep a extra rag around just to wipe your hands on because it's going to get kind of messy. Next we can take off the castle nut. Uh, if it's tight, like really tight, you might need a big crescent wrench to uh, take it off. This one's kind of getting bound up here, so I'm going to grab a wrench. And we'll loosen this up. Threads must be a little boogered up on that one or something. Kind of hard to spin off by hand. Nothing a wrench won't handle. Set this aside here with your cotter pin and your cap. Next, we're going to, if we can get this washer and bearing out, we might do that. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Uh, let's see. 
the shit off of there with a the screwdriver. There's the, the washer. And we'll just go ahead and leave that bearing in there and pull the hub. So you just kind of wiggle it back and forth. The bearings won't fall out now. Let's go ahead and take it out. Set it aside as well. And then you should be able to remove the entire hub assembly. So what we've got here now is your brake assembly. Um, the easiest way to do brakes like this is to just buy the whole assembly. Uh, you got right here, you got five bolts on this axle. Uh, when you're buying them, make sure that you, uh, you count the bolts um, that match up with your axle. Some of them just have four bolts, other ones have five. This one has five, so make sure you get the right uh, backing plate uh, when you go to order your brakes. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take these five nuts off. That's going to remove the entire brake assembly from the axle. And we've just got two wires back here. Let's see, they've got them zip tied up here. These two right here. Uh, it doesn't matter which uh, color goes where. Uh, both of the wires on the... Actually, this one's broke right there. That's probably why that one's not working. Um, both of the wires on the brakes are going to be black. Um, but it doesn't matter which one you hook it up to. So... Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, red, I think we've got red and white here, or red and black. Um, it doesn't matter. You can hook them up either way. So we're going to remove these nuts on the front side, and we'll clip these wires. I'll get my impact here. This is a DeWalt half-inch impact. If you are going to do this with this piece of equipment, make sure that it's on the lowest setting down here, so setting one. Uh, and I've got a 916th long socket on here to break these loose. We'll uh, take our nuts and set them over here on our shop towel. Keep them out of the dirt. If you're fortunate enough to have a shop building or a concrete pad to, to do this on, I'd highly recommend doing that. And also, pick a warm day. Don't pick a day that's like 35 degrees and kind of spitting rain. Well, it's kind of tight on there. The threads must have been gummed up. All right, so we've got our five nuts off of here. Set them down. Now we can remove the brake assembly from the axle. And take your wire cutters. We'll cut the zip tie here that's holding those wires in. And now we can cut the wires free from the brake assembly. Yeah, so we've got a red, well, I've got a white and a red wire right there. So we'll get rid of this and get the new one. All right, we've got the new brick assembly here, the whole deal, kit and caboodle. You've got your two wires coming out the back here. Like I said, uh, they're both black. It doesn't matter which way you hook them up, it'll still work the same way. So, uh, when you're putting these on, be sure that you've got the correct side. So this is a right-hand brake assembly. Make sure that you put the right-hand brake assembly on the right side of the trailer. Uh, one way, uh, just look at your old one whenever you're taking it off and make sure that it's oriented the same way. I know that the wires are coming out on the left side here, and that's what we needed for this side. Uh, but they also should be marked with a, a sticker or something on the part number uh, to tell you which side that you're going to go on. So, let's go ahead. We'll take our wire strippers. We're going to strip back these wires since we snipped them off. Twist those up nice. And on the back of this, go ahead and get these wires twisted up nice. And now, we're going to go ahead and slide this over the axle. Make sure that your wires are out of the way here whenever you go to mount that up. Put a nut or two on here. 
just to keep it from falling off if we bump it. And we'll go to getting this wired up. All right, so we're gonna take a, a blue butt connector. And I like to put a little dielectric grease inside of the connector. Just stick the tip of it in there, get a little shot. And that just helps to keep any water out from getting in there and ruining your connection there. Now, before I forget, which I've done many a times, we need to cut some heat shrink tubing, slip over there. Before we put all that back together, take your wire cutters or some scissors or whatever, cut off a couple inches heat shrink tubing. Usually bend it a little bit there and get it to open up. Slide that over your wire. I'm gonna go ahead and cut another one so I don't forget. Gotta slip it apart there. If I can get it to. There we go. Slide it over the other wire. Now, we're good to connect these wires together. We'll slide this in. Now these are just the uh, crimp style. Uh, they are a heat shrink fitting, but we're gonna add heat shrink on top of them as well, just to give them that extra seal. Uh, I would recommend using the uh, solder connections, actually. They're quite a bit better than these, and you'll get a much more solid connection uh, I didn't have any of those on hand, so we're going to use these today. Now we'll go ahead and uh, get this other wire connected here. Alright, now I'm going to take the heat gun here, and we're going to shrink these fittings first. And then we'll slide the heat shrink tape over these fittings and shrink it as well. All right, you'll probably notice there, um, it's important to work kind of all the way around the fitting because if you just put heat on one side, uh, it actually won't shrink the opposite side. So you need to kind of work the heat all the way around both ends of the fitting uh, to make sure that you get a good solid connection there, sealed up tight. So now we're gonna slip the uh, heat shrink tubing over the butt connector. And now we'll go ahead and uh, shrink those down as well. All right, one thing that I did not mention that you might need are a couple of zip ties. Uh, it's, it's good to keep these wires tied up out of the way. Uh, if it gets hanging down and gets caught on something on the road that you're you know, maybe there's a stick in the road or something, it could grab that wire and pull it loose. So, I'm going to go ahead and put a zip tie on here. And uh, just secure that wire to the top of the axle uh, to help try to keep it from hanging down and, and grabbing anything. So, we've got all this secured here. Um, the wires are all sealed up, good to go, watertight. Now we'll move back around to the front and actually bolt the uh, brake assembly to the axle. All right, we're back around to the front of the brake assembly here. We're gonna finish putting the rest of the nuts on here. Uh, get this cinched back up to the axle.
right, when I had my head stuck under the fender here, uh, I knocked some dirt down onto the, uh, the axle here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and wipe the grease off of that, make sure that all the dirt is off of it before we reassemble everything. We don't want any grit or grime in there. Uh, it might damage the bearings. And uh, we don't want to have to replace the bearings. They're still good right now. So we don't want them to get worn out or anything like that. So remove all the dirt. If you got anything on there, any contaminants, we want a nice clean surface whenever we put this back together. Uh, one other thing I like to do, we're gonna, we're gonna put new grease in these, obviously, since we've taken it all apart. I'm gonna take the, the cap, which is full of grease, and I'm gonna go ahead and, and scoop all that out of there so that when we put our new grease in, uh, we can fill the cap up and that way we'll get all that old nasty grease out of there get some fresh stuff in there All right, I've got most of the grease out of the cap. Uh, we'll go ahead and put the hub back on the axle. All right, if you got any dirt down in the hub, uh, make sure that you get all that out, of course. Before we put this back together, we're just gonna slide this back over the axle. Have to wiggle it a little bit to get it to go on there. Watch your fingers, it'll pinch you. Then we're going to take our, our bearing that we took out, make sure that there's no dirt or grime on it. As long as you set it down on a clean rag, you should be all right. We'll put that in, we'll put our washer back in there, and then we'll replace our castle nut onto the shaft. It's kind of stubborn, but it's going on there. I get it nice and snug. Make sure that your hub is seated on there well. Spin that castle nut until it's getting tight. You kind of want to rock the hub back and forth up and down give it a good wiggle you also give it a good spin make sure that uh, everything's good in there moving around good you don't want it too tight but you don't want it too loose either now I would probably recommend replacing your cotter pin these can get fragile and break uh, I don't have any with me right now so I'm gonna reuse this one this day this time around so find that hole the cutter pin goes in. And we'll slip the cutter pin in and bend it back over. All right, I got the cutter pin in there. Castle nut is secured. It is very important that you get this right. Uh, if that cutter pin gets misplaced and you forget to put it in there, what'll happen is that castle nut will work its way off and the entire hub and wheel will come falling off of the axle. So you definitely wanna keep your eyes on straight here and uh, make sure that you get that cutter pin back in. I've heard some horror stories of mechanics you know, they forget to put the cotter pin in, and that can cause some serious injuries uh, if you forget that part. So do not forget the cotter pin. Make sure that your castle nut is secured. Make sure that the cotter pin is bent over well enough where it cannot work its way out of there. Uh, this one's all good and tight. Uh, the hub is good. 
spinning freely, but tight, snug. So you don't want any movement in it. You want your bearings to be tight, but not so tight that uh, you can't move the hub. Uh, all right, uh, I guess now we need to put our cap back on and uh, then we can grease it up. All right, so we'll put the cap on. Take your uh, your mallet, uh, preferably a rubber mallet or a dead blow or something like that with a soft surface. Just gonna tap that back on there. Kind of work it all the way around so it gets nice and seated on there. And we'll take our flathead screwdriver, remove the rubber cap in the middle to access our grease cert. Take your grease gun. If you have an electric grease gun, man, they are super handy. It saves a lot of time pumping. And uh, if you're ever greasing an excavator or a tractor or anything like that where you've got to hold the, uh, the grease gun on the fitting, man, this makes it so much easier because you can hold it on with one hand and then uh, just work it with the trigger on the other hand. So what we're going to do is we're going to grease this up. Uh, and we're going to put enough grease in it until it starts to fill this cap up and starts coming out of the hole here. Um, a lot of people, I mean, that's probably too much grease for it, really. But I don't like uh, any water getting in there. So I'd rather displace all of this open area in the cap uh, and fill it full of grease. Just so if any moisture gets in there, it can't make its way uh, back into the bearings. Greased up. I laid my dust cap down in the dirt. Got some grass on it, so make sure that uh, it's nice and clean as well. There's no contaminants in there. Replace your rubber cap. Now, this is a good thing to keep an eye on, too. Um, check from time to time, you know, every time you rotate your tires, uh, make sure there's, that there's no cracks in this rubber boot here. Um, uh, you know, you don't want any moisture getting in there or anything like that. So these are cheap, you know, keep some on hand. Uh, occasionally the rubber, you know, it'll crack over time and get worn. So this is something to keep an eye on just to, to make sure that you're keeping the elements out of your, uh, your, uh, axle there. So, uh, this one is all finished up. Uh, the only thing we need to do now is adjust the brake. Uh, and that's what we'll need our brake adjustment tool for. So... I'll try to get uh, some video of that. It's kind of back behind there, but I'll do my best to get the camera in there. All right, we're about to adjust the brakes uh, so that they're nice and tight up against the hub. Um, what you need to do, I guess the easiest way to show you this is on one that's already apart. So there's these two little, uh, I don't know if you can see that, or not. there's just two little rubber caps here on the back side. Um, you're gonna remove those. And what'll happen is this tool You'll be able to fit up in that slot, and then you can turn this nut right here. And this nut uh, basically spreads the shoes out or in uh, towards or away uh, the actual the hub. So uh, you'll slip this tool in from underneath through that slot, and then you'll be able to feel it whenever you get in these little grooves here. And then you'll work that uh, up or down, uh, whether you need to tighten or loosen uh, the actual brakes. So uh, I'm going to try to get the camera down there to show you that. And you can also kind of hear it click uh, whenever you whenever you turn it. Uh, it sits up against the spring here, so every time you turn it, that spring kind of clips against that uh, that notch in that in that nut. So uh, it's kind of hard to do. You just kind of have to do it by feel, really. Um, but what our goal is here is we want to tighten these um, up against the hub to where it's just rubbing up against the hub. Uh, we just want a little bit of tension there uh, so that whenever you apply the brakes, it's pressing right into it. There's not too much of a gap between the brakes and the actual the drum. So we'll get those adjusted and that'll be it. All right. Come right down here. You'll be able to, to feel it turning a 
we want to do is we just want a little bit of rub. That's pretty close. We might go a notch or two more. You can hear it rubbing on there. Just want it to be a little bit of rub so that the brakes are close whenever you apply the brakes. It's going right to the hub. I think that's pretty good. So when you're turning this, uh, what you'll do is to tighten them, you're gonna push your wrench down like this. Uh, and that's gonna spin that nut upwards, uh, which is, is spreading the brakes apart. If you wanted, if it was too tight, you would wanna start down here and pull that back. And that's gonna, uh, that's gonna loosen them up. Yeah. So now we'll replace those rubber caps in here and seal that up so that uh, no moisture can get in there. All right, that's a complete brake job on this axle here. Uh, I've already done that one over there, but I've got the other two on the other side to do. So let me get those knocked out and uh, then we can get the tires and wheels back on. All right, I got this other side all done, all wired up, put back together, hubs are on. Now we'll uh, jack up this side, put the wheels and tires on. I also got some new lug nuts today as well. Um, solid lug nuts. Don't ever buy these silly capped things. This is what came on the trailer, and they have a stainless steel cap on them. I don't know if you can see that right there. And they're great, they don't rust, but man, they get stuck in the socket. And I've rolled the edges over on one, you know, trying to get it torqued down right. And then you can't hardly get the thing off. And it's just a pain in the butt. So, yes, they are nice. They don't rust. But just buy a solid steel chrome-plated lug nut. And you'll have a lot less hassle. So, let's get these put on. All right, we are all set, back in business. New brakes and new tires, actually. Um, I usually go through about two sets of tires on this trailer a year. Uh, I've been buying just the cheapest ones I could get, but I'm trying out these Hercules brand ones, uh, H901 Hercules. Uh, these are 225-75-15s, but man, the, the tread on these things are deep. It's almost like a a, a semi tire it's just square tread but very deep so i'm hoping i can get a whole year out of this set of tires they're a little bit more expensive but if i last a whole year it'll be worth it so uh thanks for watching um hopefully this was somewhat entertaining and instructional uh, if you're if you need to change brakes on a trailer axle hopefully that'll help you out some so uh thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time